What's up YouTube? It's your boy Gene from Grey Matter Games and I'm back with another review video covering Plague Tale Requiem which released earlier this week. Now, I want to briefly say this is my second review in my channel. My first one is if you look above, it's Gran Turismo. I give you my honest opinion on Gran Turismo from a casual perspective. Now, I am a hardcore racing fan, but what I mean from casual perspective, I mean I'm breaking down the game in a very casual perspective so that people who have never played video games or never played into a specific genre and have been curious know the most important portions about that game, the most important pros and the most important cons. I don't nitpick any little things because I believe if you nitpick everything, you'd never buy a video game, period, and you would never go to the movies, and you probably would never watch TV because nothing is perfect. So... Without further ado, thank you for everyone that supports my channel, and this is the first time seeing my channel. Welcome to Grey Matter Games, where I cover everything from leaks, lead-ups, potential walkthroughs, hot takes, potential streams on the line, everything in the gaming sphere. I'll cover it to the best of my abilities. Let's get right into it, and if you like this video, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the bell for notification for future uploads, because this algorithm is kicking my channel's butt, I'm not gonna lie. Now, quickly, I just wanna recap Plague Tale in general as a whole, it's developed by Asobo Studios, it's published by Focus Home Interactive, now it's available on all next-gen consoles, Series X, S, PS5, both Plague Tale Innocence and Plague Tale Requiem, Plague Tale, In Plague Tale Innocence is the first installment into the franchise, and according to my research, it has come out in Switch, <laughs> fact check me if that's true or not, I don't own a Switch, it's on PC, now it's a action adventure survival genre you can also say it's a little bit of horror because although there is no jump scare although there is no jump scare the story is very horrific so you could take that as you want now to wrap to 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 summarize the first game and and a little bit of the second game without spoiling anything the point of the first game is we got two characters well there's more down the line in the story but the two most important characters, Amicia and Hugo, brothers and sisters. And basically the whole point, the setting is, it's in like this Black Plague era, the 14th century. And of course, it's a fake, it's a fake version of the Black Plague. It's a, it's a very exaggerated story of the Black Plague. But from what I understood in this universe, some sort of mysterious curse is attracting the, the rats in big waves like we're talking like world war z level when the zombies took over the big wall and they just jumped over it's like that with the rats except the raptor are busting through the whole castles busting from underground creating earthquakes and stuff it's a crazy 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 game but the whole point is there's a curse that is no pun intended plaguing the city or plaguing the world and it is controlling the rats and 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 it's killing everything you know, everything and all things in the environment. Um, sorry if I'm keeping it a little too simple. It's just I don't want to spoil anything because both games are virtually the same story. It's a complete, it's a, the second game Requiem is a uh, instant, instant sequel to the first one. So I don't want to spoil anything for nobody. Um, now, I want to simply say this, right? Let's talk about the pros and cons to both games in general, very quickly. Great graphics great acting, great storytelling, and the chemistry between all the actors that are on set. It's very good. Very, 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 very good. The combat is very simple. It's almost, if I can compare it to something, and it's not exactly, but if I can compare it to something, it's Guardians of the Galaxy. You control Peter Quill. Peter Quill either punches or shoots people, and that's really it, and you command your allies to assist you in combat. In this case, with Plague Tale, you have friends uh, during the story that will assist you in sneaking, looting, healing, distraction, uh, distracting enemies, stuff like that. It isn't necessarily a running up to people, beating them up type of game. It's not running up and killing people either. It's a very strategic game of survival, but it's also a very linear path story. It's not really open world for say, but it does have little like secrets to kind of emphasize the importance of the universe. Now, this is a dual blade, right? It's not on 60. It's not on 60 FPS. There's no 60 FPS on this game, which kind of sucks. But 30 FPS does benefit this particular game because of the way the story is flowed, structured, everything. Everything about the game is slow on purpose to make you 
basically be very aware of your environment and make sure you unlock every bit of information you can gather about what is going on in this story. Now, at the same time, on the con side of things, let's see, on the con side of things, well, honestly, there's really not, oh, there is actually a con, right? No game is perfect, right? There is a con. One of them being that the pacing of the story, both of them have the same problem, where basically it starts off strong, it ends really strong, and the story overall is always strong, but how do I explain it? One level can take you 30 minutes, one level can take you 10, one level can take you literally, I'm not joking, over an hour to complete, another one can literally go up to like 120 minutes or so, like it's very dragged on in certain events that I feel like it doesn't really have to be dragged on. And it does, for me, hinder my experience a little bit. It makes me kind of want to go, okay, I'm taking a break and I'm going home. Or I'm taking a break, I'm going to swap and play something else and come back to this later. So it's one of those. That's like one of my big problems. I do wish my character could fight more. But there is a story. Innocence, it's in the title. Amicia, which is the protector of Hugo... She just has a slingshot, you know, a couple little things here and there, but predominantly she doesn't want to kill. She does kill when she has to in the first game, but she doesn't want to kill. She's very innocent. Her mind is, is very, very sweet. Like she does, she cherishes people, even, you know, her worst enemy. She doesn't want to take a life, but events will happen in that first one, which I will not say that will shift her mentality into the sequel and when you start the sequel, you'll know right away her character is a little different. You know, she's still Amicia. Um, in terms of how much she loves her little brother Hugo and how she much she loves her other supportive characters. But at the end of the day, she is a little bit more bloodthirsty in this one. You get a crossbow. You get uh, knives to stab people. You get different things. Um, well, not well, there is a variety of rocks you can use with your slingshot in the first one. But there's more this time around. There's just many ways that you can brutally kill the enemy knights that are there. So that's that's something to keep in mind. Um, now, I will say this. The world building is pretty good in here. The universe overall is really, really good. I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to spoil anything. But if they decide to make more in this franchise, whether it's in different eras or different, you know, alternate universes of different plagues in general or whatever they want to do this company with this with this uh, title Plague Tale. I am looking forward to it. I really am. It is probably one of the best games that are in Game Pass right now if you own Xbox. And uh, again, there is little glitches here. It, it does have frame frame drops, which is a bunch of negatives and stuff like that. Sometimes, it, it happened to me, sometimes there was a little bit of audio delay in there. But the game just came out, so I do expect a patch of some sort later down the road. Um, there is a new game plus mode. I haven't really touched it because... To be honest, the story's pretty long, and I don't want to go back into it again. Um, it's it's one of those stories that, for me, it's it's a linear path story. I, I've never played Guardians of the Galaxy a second time. I played it one time, loved it, and I don't play it again. It's just it's just it's very rare when I do new game plus for me. Um, you have to have really good replay value for me. There's crafting. Well, crafting's always been there, but uh, one of the new mechanics that they have is like there's new items you can craft i don't want to spoil what they are um the level up system and the i guess you could say they're perks right you're learning abilities as you progress in the story the perk system's pretty cool as well but overall it's a very simple game to keep it really you know simple no pun intended it's a very basic game with basic mechanics you sneak around you you kill people with slingshots or you stab them and you try to engage the least possible with these enemies, there's a lot of stealth. They a lot of the times they require you to just be stealthy. There is puzzles in the game that you have to solve in the dungeons. There is again rats that you have to avoid. But the game overall makes you think a lot. It 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 doesn't it doesn't necessarily hold your hand. Uh, it holds your hand early on to learn the mechanics. But once you get to this point and you'll know where when it is, it, it's when the story starts to pick up a little bit. And, and, and kind of show the audience, okay, this is what we're dealing with right now. When that happens, the game stops to hold your hand. And it's up to you to remember all the tools, all the mechanics, and what to do um, to be able to thrive in certain situations. There are boss fights, per se. There are, you know, boss fights slash arena moments in this game. Um, 
which are pretty cool change-ups. I will say the co- the the mechanics are very repetitive, like like the kind of uh, level layout. It is very repetitive. I will say that, um, but again, so is Guardians of the Galaxy. It is very repetitive. It's something about you know games like these where the mechanic of the game is very simple. The gameplay is very simple, but what drives it is the story and the acting and the world building. That is what drives these particular uh, set of games. Um, And if that's what you're into, go check them out. It's on PlayStation 5. Again, it's on Series X and S. It's on quote-unquote Nintendo Switch and PC. Now, you're going to ask me my opinion, my verdict of this. The first game, since it was the first one, I'll be honest, it was a lot slower than the second one. So the first one, I would honestly give it a 7 out of 10. But the second one was very good of a sequel and it's very rare when sequels do better than the first and i gotta say i can confidently say it's like an 8.5 out of 10 just because the story is just so so good and it makes you like it invests you into the story very well because and this this you can compare this to movies the writing is so good that it does the right job of you cheering for the protagonist amicia and hugo You feel sad for certain people when you know you're supposed to feel sad. You feel angry and and you kind of hate certain characters when you see those characters. And you kind of hope those people disappear, vanish or whatever, die, however you want to say it. Don't want to spoil anything. The game does a really good job of pulling your emotions into it. Whether you want to express them or not, in your mind... It does a very good job. I found myself a lot in the second one kind of going, dang, I hope so-and-so dies. Oh, no, I hope this doesn't happen to this person. Like, I literally have, have thought that through a lot. Um, What I would have liked to have added in this game is if they didn't want to change the formula in terms of the combat, that's fine. I would have added more puzzles, to be honest. Um, That would have changed up the flow a little bit. But overall, I think it was great. I think it's overall a really, really good game. You just have to be very patient and understand what you're going into. It's a story-driven game. It's a slow-paced, story-driven game, and you have to know that going in. So, should you buy the sequel? Well, I'll be honest here. If you have Game Pass, go check it out. If you had Game Pass in the last year, Plague Tale was there. The Innocent One was was there earlier this year. You should have checked it out. And if you see it on sale, go buy it. You know, it's a really, really good game if you see it on sale. That was my dog passing by if you hear a noise. But, but, if you have Game Pass right now and you've played the first Plague Tale, go check out the second one. You will not be disappointed. And if this is the first time you've ever heard of Plague Tale, hopefully my review helps you check that out. I, I guarantee you that if you're into story-driven games, if you want to feel like it's a movie and that's something i want to say especially specify the graphics in this game whether it's on the series s or an x it makes it feel like it's a movie like it's not cartoony it's not over the top it's just just right in terms of the camera angle the graphics the art style the animal life everything about it it feels like it's a movie right picture world war z but rats instead of zombies like that's really the way they depicted this thing that's the best, you know, casual way I can I can explain it. Damn, my dog's out there trying to scratch herself. But that's it. It's an 8.5 out of 10. I really, really, really recommend you check it out. And most importantly, I want to say this, and this is something I'm going to specify in all of my videos. I can give you a review. IGN can give you a review. A bunch of people can give you a review. But the most important reviewer is you. You make the assumption. You you do your research. You look at it and you say, okay, I want to check this out. Okay, I checked it out. I like this. I really do. It's up to you to make that pick. There's a lot of games right now coming out and movies that have had mixed things where the critics like it, the audience hate it. The audience love the game, the critics hate it, and so on and so forth. That has happened a lot. And to be honest, IGN is one of those and, and Game Informers is one of those that I don't necessarily trust all the way. Um, It kind of depends what kind of franchise I'm looking for is when I trust them in terms of reviews. I don't really trust them for everything. Um, They had a very mixed thing when it comes to Gotham Knights. And I'll explain that in my Gotham Knights review later during the week. Um, You know, keep your notifications up for that one. I'm playing the game as we speak. And I'll give you my honest to God opinion on that from a casual perspective. 
But if you like the video, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell for notifications. And if you have any recommendations on how I can make my reviews a lot better, let me know. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit me up on Instagram. On all social medias, check it out and let me know any hints or any advice on what I can do to make it a lot better. I hope you all enjoy this. It's your boy Gene from Grey Matter Games and that's all I really have for you all. Until next time, peace.